Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Will be will be today's video will be about what can we learn from the Tower of Babel. Okay. But we will start it was a lot in this in Genesis chapter 10. The table of nations. This is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah's sons, who themselves had sons after the flood. Japheth, no, the, the Japheth did. The son of Japheth, Guma, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, no, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Guma, Ashkenaz, Rifat, and Togama. The sons of Javan, Elisha, Tashish, the Kittites, and the Rodanites. From this, the maritime peoples spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations, each with its own language. The Hamites, the sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Sabteca. The sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Uru, Akkad, and Kelna in China. From that land he went to Assyria where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, I, Rehoboth, I, Kela, and Resen, which is between Nineveh and Kela, which is the great city. Egypt was the father of the Lodites, another Mites, an Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtuhites, Path Rurusites, Kaslu Heights, from whom the Philistines came, and and Kaptro right Canaan was the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Gigashites, Hivites, Akites, Sinitites. Avat, Avadites, Zimarites, and Hamadites. Later, the Canaanites clans scattered, and the borders of Canaan reached from Sidon toward Gera, as far as Gaza, and then toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zebuim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. Sons were also born to Shem, whose older brother was Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the sons of Eber. The sons of Shem, Ella, eh, no, Elam, Asha, Ap, Apaxad, Lad, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hal, Gether, and Meshech. Apaxad, Apaxad, was the father of Shelah, and Shelah the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. One was Peleg, because in his time the earth was divided. His, brothers, his brother was named Joktan. Joktan was the father of Almodad, Shelah, Hazamaveth, Jera. Hadoram, Uza, Dekla, Oba. Um, I pronounced it funny, didn't I? Yeah. Obal, Abimel, Sheba, Ofa, Havila, and Jobab. All these were sons of Joktan. The region where they lived stretched from Mesha towards Sepha in the eastern hill country. These are the sons of Shem by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. In verse 27, I, I know I pronounced this wrong, I'm sorry. 
Sorry for that. These are the sons of Shem by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. These are the clans of Noah's sons according to their lines of this the of the of descent within their nations. From these the nations spread out over the earth after the flood. The Tower of Babel. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in China and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's, let's make bricks and bake them through, uh, thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make our name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower of the people we were building. The Lord said, If as one people is speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the, of the whole earth. What can we learn from this? We learn how pride is bad. Did the people have pride? Yes. They wanted to make themselves great. We've all been like that. Wanting to make a name for ourselves. A name that the world remembers and adore. But in seeking that, we have fallen away. These people wanted to be great, to reach the heavens, in a, to to reach the heavens. In a way, that is all of us. These are the questions to ask yourself. Do you view yourself as wise? If, Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Do you view yourself as wiser than everyone? Are you wise in your own eyes? I know I'm guilty. Of, I know I'm guilty of that. I view myself as wiser than everybody in my in my mind. I am wiser. But yeah, that's how I view myself. But really I'm just a sinner. In my eyes I'm holy. But look at my actions. My action speaks a different story. In my sinful nature I view myself as holier, more righteous. But in reality, I am a sinner that deserves death, the second death, that is the lake of fire in, in Revelation. Are you wise in your own eyes? The people in the story of the Tower of, B of Babel, not saying the story isn't true. Anyways, these people didn't want... Anyways, these people didn't want to spread throughout the earth. They wanted to make a name for themselves. The second question to ask yourself is, Are you living for the world? Do you love it? If we go to First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22, 
Here God tells us, reject every kind of evil. Are you living for the world? Do you love the things of the world? In Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 it says, Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Are you offering your body day in and day out as a living sacrifice to God? First John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. Are you of? I already say that. Have you been obedient to God? All these questions to ask ourselves. The answer is no. We haven't. We haven't been obedient. That is the sad thing. No matter what. No matter whatever I do, it will never be enough. I am a sinner. Psalms chapter 51 verse 3 to 5. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. God is right when he judges me, because I have sinned, but the gospel is... But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That was Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Let's continue. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. That is the gospel. We have all sinned, but Christ died for you and me. Sinners, we were sinners, but Christ still died for us. Not because of anything we did, but because of His love. Hebrews chapter 11 Now faith is con is in is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. 
By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his, of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By, by his faith, he, con he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand in, on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country. A heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham when called not called when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned, Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking he did receive Isaac back from the dead from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in, in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the sons, uh, uh, not sons, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded his grace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He, pers he perceived, persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the pass. Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn will not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so they were drowned. 
By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised who shut the, lion, the mouths of, the, of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed to foreign armies. Women received back their dead and raised, not and, l- let me repeat, women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refused to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goldskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. The Bible also tells us in James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. I know, I, I know I'm repeating what I said, but I just wanted you to, to know even if, if you didn't hear me. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. I'm saying this, no, I'm reading this with all gentleness, not to be harsh to anyone. Okay. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Again, I'm saying this with all gentleness. Again. You foolish person. Do you, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, 
So face without deeds is dead. The people of the Tower of, ba- of Babel were prideful and knew no God hates pride. Rom- no, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. When I was saying that, that, I, that I was reading that with all gentleness, I was talking to the believers because the Bible like tells us to like if you if you see somebody sin, you should like you should you should like rebuke them, but but gen, but with a spirit of gentleness. That's why I was saying that. So, yeah. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 5. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Proverbs 4 verse 6. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. What can we learn from the Tower of Babel? We learn that the people in Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 9 decided to make a name for themselves, to be adored, and they wanted to follow their own ways. But the Lord stopped them. What we learn is, when we fear and obey God, God will not take us out from their branches. Because when we look at Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 9, we learn to obey God or God will punish us. Romans chapter 11 chapter 11 I asked then did God reject his people by did God reject his people by no means I am an Israel, Israelite myself a, desen, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin God did not reject his people whom he foreknew don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left and they are trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bound the need to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were grace, would if it were grace, will no longer be grace. What then? What the people of Israel sought so earnestly, they did not obtain. The elect among them did, but the others were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a spirit of st- of stupor, eyes that could not see and ears that could not hear to this very day. And David says, "My may their table become a snare and a trap, a, stan- a stumbling block, and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see, and their backs be bent forever." Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? I'm talking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry, in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and and save some of them, in the hope that I may... For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead?
If the part of the dough offered as fast fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. And some of the branches have been broken off, and new though a wild olive shoot have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in granted but they were broken off because of unbelief and you stand by faith do not be arrogant but tremble for if god did not spare the natural branches he will not spare you either consider therefore the kindness and sternness of god sternness to those who fell but kindness to you provided that you continue in his kindness otherwise you will also otherwise you also will be cut off and if they do not persist in unbelief they will be grafted in for god is able to graft them in again after all if you are cut off an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated uh, olive tree how much more readily will these the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree I do not want you to be in ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and in this way all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are, en- they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a, res- as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of the riches of the, of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God and th- that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. I read this so that you may know the importance of obeying God. I want you to obey to obey God because because to I want you to obey God. Like for example me, I I fear God because the reason I I also want to obey God is because I fear my eternity if I don't obey God. This isn't a bad fear. For example, a man is walking down a street listening to music. He wasn't paying attention of what was ahead of him. When he removed his earphones, he suddenly noticed he was going to be hit by a truck. The driver was drunk, so he ran, so he ran to the to the side where the truck isn't heading. So tell me, was that fear good or bad? In the same way, the fear of the Lord helps us to obey God. Thanks be to God, He gave He gives us a helper, the Holy Spirit. Not saying the fear of the Lord is the Spirit of God, because that would be bad. 
when we have the fear of the of God, we will think fast before disobeying God. But also know this. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 Blessed are those who wash their robes. Uh, no, first uh, we have to read uh, uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. So, so if you walk in obedience to God, this is God's promise to you. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. And I'm not talking, and, and um, trust me if I'm wrong, but trust me if I'm wrong, do you think this is an earthly reward or a heavenly reward? Me, for me, I think it's, an, it's a heavenly reward. Because it says, look, I'm coming soon, my reward is with me. Because when Jesus Christ returns, he will give to each he will give to each person according to what they have done. If I'm wrong, I am wrong and I'm sorry. Test me with the Bible. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us draw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Revelation chapter 22 verse 20 he who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Here is, an, here is another one that shows us uh, like the kindness of our God. I mean, right now he's talking to the... Right now God is like speaking uh, to the... About the Israelites but i still think this this still shows us how who is our god when israel was a child i loved him this is from verse 11. i love i love when israel was a child i loved him and out of egypt i called i called my son But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed uh, to the Baals and to uh, to, be, to the to the Baals and they burned incense to the to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, talking, uh, taking them by their arms. But they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. Will they return to Egypt, and will, no, will they not return to Egypt, and will not is Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? 
and sword will flash in their cities. It will devour their false prophets and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me, even though they call me God's Most High. I will, I will by no means extol, exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeb Zeboim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come against these their cities. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come from Egypt trembling like sparrows, from Assyria fluttering like doves. I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. Ephraim has surrounded me with lies, Israel with deceit, and Judah is unruly against God, even against the faithful one, even against the faithful, the holy one. Even against the faithful Holy One. Here we see how God is our Father. How does, here, how does this apply to us? Here we see that God as our Father calls us, but we as human beings, we as sinners, reject Him day in and day out, every single day of this life that we live. That is why, that is why we are wretched sinners, we are sinners. But God sent, sent His Son to save us. And now we are children of God. Now, do you know what children of God means? A child of God? God has, God has made us sons and daughters. He has brought us to his family and has made us sons and daughters all because of what Jesus did on the cross. Now if you believe you and if you believe you are a child of God. If if you go to John Chapter chapter one verse twelve to three. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or has a husband's will, but born of God. This is what God did for us. He died, he rescued us from sin. He is our loving Father. And when we are in trouble, we should, when we are in trouble, we should go to our Father because He is our Father. Because our God, we are children of Him. That's what I'm trying to say. And He is our Father. And what, that, what does that mean? It means that whenever we are in trouble, we can pray to our loving Father as a child, as a child goes to his parents for help. God is our Father. And, and He will be with us always. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will always be with us. Test me with the Bible even and see whether I am telling the truth.
because I do not want to lead anyone astray. So please trust me with the Bible. I don't want on the last day the, a, a God a, to tell me. I don't want to, on the judgment day. I don't want like, whether I die or when it or when it is time when God judges me. I don't want Him to throw me to the lake of fire because that's why I am telling you this. Please test me with the Bible. And and if you and if and if and if this video and and if God used this video to bring you to Christ and now you are a new Christian, then welcome uh, welcome to to our to the family of faith. And but remember, you will always have troubles on earth. You will always have troubles on earth, as long as we are in this world. Before, before God, before you know the second coming, we will always have troubles on this earth. We will always have troubles on this on this earth before, before the second coming, before like the 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 that those stuff in scripture, yeah, that says like those like those things. We, we will always have troubles, but but in the end, we will rest and enjoy have a reward that God will give us. He will give us a reward. And what a wonderful day that will be. A day of laughter, a day of enjoyment. And in the New Jerusalem, when God creates an, a new a, a new earth and in the new Jerusalem when it comes uh, uh, down from heaven in that city we will know what true happiness is we will know what what living is because right now this in, in this life we are i can't say that we are living in a perfect world because we are not but in the world to come in the next world where righteousness dwells where holiness dwells where it's where it's where everybody wants and desires to obey God that is the next that is the world that I want to be in and I'm excited for that world I'm excited for the for a world where where every everyone wants to please and obey God where we won't be tempted because there won't be any sin the devil won't be there to tempt us he will be in the lake of fire suffering with the rest uh, with the rest of the people who wanted to follow him and who didn't want to follow god he will be uh, uh, with them suffering but we as children of god we who have passed from death to life we who have been bought by the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we will live in a world of righteousness in a world of holiness a world free from sin and death free from sickness and every single bad thing because the old things will be gone as as it is written Revelation chapter two twenty one to two two no, 
Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 to 2. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful, beautifully dressed for her husband. And as we read on in Revelation chapter 21 verse 9 to 27, one one of the seven angels who had the seven bowels full of the seven last big plagues came and said to me, Come, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of, the, of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very special jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the, of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square. As long as it was wide, he, uh, as long as it was wide, he measured the city with a rod and found it to be twelve thousand stadia in length and as wide. Uh, and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement as it was a 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold as pure as glass. The foundations of the city was of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first stone was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald. The fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth burial, the ninth topaz, the, ne the tenth turquoise, uh, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made out of a single pearl. This great sea, the great street of the city was of pure. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives, gives its light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and, and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor, uh, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those who are rich. Who, whose name, but, on, who, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In verse 4, uh, when we go over here earlier, forgot to read that. I didn't even remember that, uh, that, the, uh, that I, uh, about that. So, oh well, yeah, we can just read it right now. He will be, he will wipe every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away this is the world that i want to live in that is why each day and day that is why each day and each month year after year day after day Night after night, we should press on and press on. We should press on and press on because the price that awaits, that awaits us, even the reward that God will give to each person according to what they have done, 
if because it's too wonderful to pass by to for us to pass by because what does it matter if i if the whole world hates me for preaching the truth what does it matter what does it matter because i would rather preach the gospel i would rather preach the truth i would rather preach the truth and enjoy and enjoy, and enjoy what awaits me than than living for the world and suffering because of what because, because i didn't accept because i didn't repent because i didn't humble myself because i didn't le- because of what I, because i didn't believe in god i would rather live for god and obey him and walk in obedience according to what he has told me uh, uh, in the bible i would rather do that and enjoy what a what a waits for me than living for the world and suffering because i did not believe in god my brothers and sisters if you have watched the my brothers and sisters in christ if you have watched this video up to right now thanks for watching it and if you have been touched by the message God bless you and I Yeah I hope I hope to meet you like one day well like like one day Yeah God bless you God bless you may God be with you What have we learned from the tower of babel we have learned that disobedience has its own consequences just as the people of the tower of babel they disobeyed god and look at what their punishment was in the same way when we obey god uh, when we obey god and live for him we have a reward that awaits for us So the question is will you will you will as of starting of today will you live for God will you obey him will you obey every single word he tells you in his word even if it even even if you even if you didn't know that was a sin and you and you have been doing that thing for a while and you didn't know that was a sin even if it seems uh, too enjoyable like you are so used to uh, to doing that sin and it and now you have you have discovered it is a it, it that god said you're not supposed to do that even if you even if, even if it even if your sinful nature doesn't want to like accept uh, god's word and obey we should still obey but uh, this is first samuel chapter verse first chapter verse first samuel chapter 15 verse 22 but samuel replied does the lord delight in burnt in burnt offerings and sacrifices says as much as in obeying the lord to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams for rebellion is like the sin of divination of divination and arrogance like the evil of adultery because you have rejected the word of the lord he has rejected you as king that if i read this like harshly i'm sorry
Okay. The Tower of be of people teach of people teaches us to obey God and to listen to what He tells us. So, what is your mission today? Is it to obey God? As Samuel says, to obey is better than sacrifice, and I'm sure God was speaking through him. So, here we learn that obedience is far way better. So, God desires obedience, and He wants us to be obedient. Faith without works is dead. So, so we should live each day by faith. So, the question for you is, will you live today and forever uh, and forevermore until until God calls you home or or until like like you get it you got what I'm what I'm like trying to say will you live for God and in, will you live in obedience and and trust in obey uh, and will you live in obedience and trust God or will you live for the world